it's good morning over here actually <laughs> good morning <laughs> over here so Lisa and Humera from Canada yes so it's yes. good morning here it's still good it's still good, like, day. good day <laughs> thank you <laughs> good evening Mr. Rukni hi how are you I'm hi how are you all right Hello everyone. Hello. Hello. I'm feeling so good. It feels like I'm back with my family. Yes. Feels so nice. <laughs> Such a warm feeling to see you all. Yeah, we are, we are going live on Facebook and uh, YouTube also. Facebook and YouTube. Okay. So, oh. Yeah. So we will be live over there on Facebook and YouTube. If some of your uh, guests or some of your friends, they want to just be the part of it, they can see us live on Facebook. They can ask questions from there. Mm -hmm. okay. Everyone joined in though? No, uh, still few are left. Pa from the panelists, you are there, Nafisa, Mr. Rukni. Uh, Mr. Khalil Abdul Wahid, he will be there within five, five minutes. And in students also, I think Varsha yeah, right. Ridima is not there. So it's live on Facebook now. We are audible. I am audible. Absolutely. Very much. Okay. Yes. So how is the day? I will ask from Manisha. Manisha, how is there everything? Uh, if we are talking about COVID, the situation is like really bad. Cases are increasing. Mm -hmm. The spirits are alive, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's important. And what about Canada? Well, in Canada, as if it's like, you know, everyone has taken off the mask, only it's mandatory in uh, the uh, marts and, uh, you know, where you go shopping. But yes, they have, uh, you know, restrictions in terms of people, some places, you know, depending upon the size of the shopping area, you have one to five to 50, and they really are adhering to it. But otherwise, if, you know, if they are just uh, walking around, you know, outside in the neighborhood, they're going to park, they're going to restaurants. Uh, you know, if they're in public areas, they don't wear masks. But yes, if they are in somewhere where there are a lot of people, they do. So it's, it's pretty normal. It, it wasn't as much restricted as it was around the world. And I think Humera would also agree. You know, it, it wasn't as much. We could go around. We could. It was just that, you know, they were maintaining social distancing that are, as uh, there are. But otherwise, yeah. we did not feel as much. No, I feel like over here the best thing was the way the people also reacted. Like they did follow rules and they did wear masks. So, you know, it was really easy for the government to handle the entire situation as well. That's true. Even, even now, I mean, many people have taken off, but, uh, you know, in like, in, like I said, the public areas, they still wear. <laughs> yeah, they still wear, yeah. Yeah, yeah they still wear, it's not a true. So, and even though Sultana ma'am is there with us right now, she is there. Good evening, Sultana ma'am. Yasser is there. Yasser is there. Peter, Peter is also there. So nice to see all of you over here on one screen. Mira. Okay, Rayan. Rayan is Rayan Joy, and who is left now? Is Peter there already? Yeah, Peter is there. How you feel about this art talk? Well, I'm very curious. I want to know. How are you going to start? What point can you start this at? Yeah, just just give me, I think, two, three minutes. People are joining. Then I will just let you know 
what the yes. what the see the program schedule will run we have six six panelists and six guest speakers and nine young teenagers enthusiastic wow. teenagers yes. will be very eager to listen from us so mr uh, mr khalil abdul wahid he will be joining us he will start he will be joining us then we will go to first five students to listen to them after right. that our panelist will speak then we will give break to our panelist and again go back to our students then the panelist again after that there will be question answer session between the students and the panelist it will be more interactive because we know how we want the main agenda main motive of this art talk is see uh, when we see today's life if we forget this pandemic situation also which we cannot forget it it is now the part of our life we see our young young children our teenagers they are more into the materialistic life they have just a created a very strong boundary wall around themselves the sharing the socializing all these things are very very less if we compare yeah mr khalil abdul wahid is there right now so i will stop myself from speaking so what i was saying is so the art talk is we we want that as art in any form maybe it a music maybe it a dance painting poetry photography whatever what we believe is that art can help them to express and come out of that strong boundary welcome sir welcome mr khalil abdul wahid you are there thank you for joining us your microphone please, please unmute your mic yeah, yeah. okay my apologies Thank you for invitation. Salam alaykum, Khalil. Waalaikum salam, Ahmed. How are you? Good, inshallah. Tamam, alhamdulillah. How are you? Good, good. Sorry, the computer. Everything is fine. Yeah. Good. I didn't want to cut you. Waalaikum salam. Waalaikum salam. How are you? Good, good. Alhamdulillah. Yourself? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Allah Hafiz. Inshallah. Nice to see you here after a long time. Thank you very much, Sam Wise. Uh, uh, nice to okay, see you, all uh, the artists. Wonderful that you can do this, you know. Thank you. So uh, I think without delaying, we are thank thanks to all of you to be too punctual. We will start our art talk and formal formal uh, opening of the art talk. Good evening, everyone. I am Shiva. artist art activist fashion designer and founder of funoon arts so on the behalf of funoon art team i would like to welcome you all to this unique art talk where our young emerging and enthusiastic talents are coming up to share their views and perspective on various aspect of art and on the other side there are people with excellence from various fields now you can imagine how interesting this in interactive event is going to be in this session we have our panelists from different backgrounds our students and a special guest so before going ahead i would like to thank our panelists and welcome them on board first and foremost mr khalil abdul wahid he don't need any introduction but still i will in, i will give a little he is an amirati artist working primarily in painting mixed media and video for video art from dubai he is the director of fine arts department dubai culture and arts authority a graduate from pennsylvania state university state college workforce education and development he holds so many awards he works so widely in the field of art to promote arts to promote artists and to promote the culture side by side 
In addition to serving as the chairman of the Emirates Fine Art Society, he, is also, he also curated the 30th Emirates Fine Art Society annual exhibition at the Sharjah Art Museum while working as an active member of the advisory board of the Department of Visual Communication at the American University and serving as a panelist from the Sheikha Manal Young Artist Award 2012. And now we are so lucky to have you here as a panelist. After that, Ms. Sultana Farooq Kazim, a gorgeous, Hello, lady, a gorgeous lady, fashion designer, express, expressionist artist, representative of Museum of America in UAE, amazing person with beautiful heart. Dr. Nafisa Sayyada, freelance visual artist with around seven years of experience, a writer of the book Mughal Jewelry, and who have done ample of education er, uh, exhibition around the world. Minisha Bhardwaj, a very dynamic lady, a well-known artist. She holds her masters in, not masters, she holds, you know, the perfection in charcoal, watercolor, and also in abstract acrylic. Award winner of so many, so many competitions, so many events. So welcome on board, Manisha. Sugat Priya Darshani, who is a Dubai-based Indian artist, head of the Department of Arts in JSS International Dubai. His art teachings are based on inner development, basic skill development, creativity-based, and stress-relieving. Work with many known brands. After that comes Yash Yasser Shams Khan, who is a default scholar in English literature at the University of Oxford, UK. He draw, think, write, but mostly read. Artist by passion and hardworking, focused and dedicated towards his aim. After that comes Dr. Romit, doctor by profession, with beautiful smile, art activist, art supporter, motivational speaker, motivational husband, and also the founder of the Paintbrush Art Community. Beside this, our list don't stop. Peter Gressman, art curator, art activist, founder of Art Forum UAE. Anjali Prakash Laitu, a pioneer artist with bundles of his experience to share with us and his achievements are never ending. Ahmed Al Awadi, a Mirati artist with unique styles of style of paintings. He is art lover, art supporter, a successful businessman, and always there to support the art fraternity. Parisaga, artist, numerologist, art therapist, and a beautiful friend. Saju Nair. He represents iTelevisionario Italy in the UAE, but today he is with us as a parent, also to share his views. Alexandra, a wonderful person from Italy. Her tremendous support towards art fraternity is really appreciable. She is the founder of iTelevisionario. Mariala, marketing manager of Ajman Hotel, Ajman. She is the beautiful lady, art lover and artist herself. And beyond this, our young talented speakers, Khan Ayan Abdullah, Varsha Saju Nair, Ridhima Prohit, Humera Madani, Shama Al Jalaf, Rayan Zidan, Govind Vashisht, Palak Surekha, Yashna Gupta. So this is the complete team which we have I hope I didn't forget anybody. Moving, moving ahead, I will like, I would invite Mr. Khalil Abdul Wahid to please start sharing his views. And students, I, I, I really uh, ensure you that this is going to be a big event, <clears throat> big experience with so many things which you are going to learn after it finish. 
So now the mic is for you, Mr. Abdul Khalil Wahid. And I, I request everyone to mute their mics, please. Thank you very much, Lewa. And also I want to thank uh, Funun Arts for this opportunity and giving a chance to talk with the student and all of us and to get all everybody together to like, you know, the digital platform. It's really uh, strange and, and uh, weird uh, the COVID period was going on, how the life is going on. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, it's amazing, like, you know, what kind of a positive or like, you know, opportunity we're being able to get. And this, like, you know, Zoom platform is one of the good opportunity, getting a chance to meet so many people, communicate, talk, discuss, see each other. And we are from own place without moving, going anywhere. Uh, so it's really great to see you all. Again, thanks, uh, Shiva, and thanks, Moon, for this opportunity. Uh, talking about art, uh, from my understanding from Shiva, like, you know, all what we have over here, everybody who's attending today, their, their passion to art, either they're artists or creative, uh, art lover, uh, and they're looking to see, like, you know, what they can do through this uh, creative part of their uh, side. Uh, basically, what I want to say is like, you know, how art is involved in our life uh, as a person and also as a parents. It's very important to notice that anywhere we go, anything we use, uh, basically it has a touch of art in it. Uh, the art is not limited with the frame itself. It's not limited to the painting. It's not limited to the uh, photography. Not also limited with the frame of video art, if we, saw, if we talk about it. The art actually is more and more and more on that. Anything we do, anything we go, anything we use for our own life, it has art on it. For example, like in our own house that we live in, the furniture, it is like an interior design. It is like a furniture design, but again, still the stuff is all, it has a taste of art. Somebody did have some like, you know, this of creativities. Uh, car that daily, they, daily use, we use the, our own car, the bicycle, the motorbike, anything we do, is all a functional machine to, like, you know, to give a purpose for a human being to use it to go from a center point to other point. But in the end, like, you know, it's not, like, you know, you don't see the engine it, it by itself, you don't see, the, see the, the gears and tire by itself. It's all combined together with a very well covered like a design that the person will drive, enjoy it, enjoy looking at it, enjoy feeling covered or sitting on it. And any aspect you see it, look at it, it's like, you know, it has a part of like, you know, a touch on it. So I'm trying to like, you know, to, to start to imagine what kind of art does, does to our life or what, what is the limitation for art. Uh, but we notice that, like, you know, there's no limitation for the art itself. Uh, going deeper with the art itself as a person, if you look at it, what is required? Uh, basically, it's a really simple thing. A lot of people, they think like, you know, somebody wants to be an artist, he has to be a creative. Well, okay, the creativity part is needed, but we need to be aware or be like, for, like be, uh, we need to like focus is like, you know, how much of the percentage we're looking for? Are we looking percentage of like 100%, 100%? And a person has to be a creative. Actually, it's not the hundred percent. You need just a little percentage to have some creativities, and that's it's open doors for us. Like you know, somebody feels has a talent in certain thing. Make sure you have a big ability to do a lot of things. The second part, which is very important in my opinion, is the passion. People has to have a passion for art passion of what you're doing. And this, the passion will drive you to do a lot of things and to be creative. Why I'm, give, why I'm seeing the passion self because I've seen the real life is uh, I met a lot of people who's like, you know, who's talented, who's really great uh, creative person, let's say it, but they don't really have that passion. And other side, and in the end, nobody knows about them and, and nobody sees any creativity come out from them, even though they're really creative. On the other hand, some people, they have maybe a little bit of creativities but they might not be very good also in the art. But because of the passion self, you know, you see them, they start to do a lot of things. They start to see like, you know, improve themselves. They start to do from the, like, you know, not just improve, improve themselves to do a great thing and to get a great opportunity. So the passion is very important. Plus, like, you know, if we go talk more, uh, more deeper about how, like, you know, to improve your art, passion, we say, Work very hard and keep pushing yourself to do a lot of things. Um, 
I keep now the, the, the floor for the rest of you. Like, you know, I like to have kind of discussion. I don't want to talk about the topic. It might not interest you. I love to hear from your side what you like, what you like, so we can open the dialogue and I like, can you know, give you information that's more useful for you. Thank you. Very Back to you, Shiba. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Uh, yeah, we, we will do the dialogues also. But before that, we have to be our teenagers are very curious to share their point of view. So before going that I will like now we will start our young speakers. First of all, I would like to invite Humera Madni from Canada. Humera Madni from Canada. Hi, everyone. Okay, so I'm Humera. I'm 17 years old. And I studied in DPF Sharjah in uh, UAE Sharjah. And later for my senior year, 12th grade, I moved to Canada. And honestly, talking about art, I feel like it's always been a part of my life. Uh, not only in terms of painting, but like every small thing I do, I've always been you know, very passionate and very like enthusiastic about what I really want to do. So for me, art is something that I use to express myself when maybe words could not do. Or maybe sometimes if I'm ever going through something, I didn't feel that good about it. The only way I could ever express it was through art. So I feel that's what's, that's why it's one of like a major part in my life. Because it's helped me like get through many things. It's helped me in, like become a better person in many other ways as well. And I feel like the purpose of art in life in general is for someone to be really, they really need to like be passionate about what they have to do. And being passionate is a very important thing because I have seen, like if I compare like my siblings, I would always tell them, oh, why don't you paint with me? And they're like, I'm not enthusiastic about painting. My sister likes to read more than painting. So I'm like, that's a form of art as well. Like if you like to read and maybe it gets you into another world, it maybe improves you, it tries to make you a better person, then sure, that can be a form of art as well because it helps you expression and like express yourself in many different ways. For me personally, I've always loved painting, drawing, anything to do with creativeness. So I think that's been like a major part in my life. And the way I connect is through my emotions. Most of my paintings, if they're either landscapes or it might be an abstract, I always base it around my family or I base it around anything to do with my close people or something I'm going through so I can connect with each and every artwork of mine when words cannot explain how I'm feeling. And um, did your school art lessons make it more or less interesting? So according to me, since I've always been passionate about art, I feel like school lessons did make it interesting for me personally because I really enjoyed it. But if I would compare my other friends with me, I feel like they would not be as enthusiastic because we would have one art book and then the teachers would say, oh, um, start painting this or start drawing this. And that way they didn't get a good grip and a good hand of like what they're supposed to learn. But for me, I've been self-taught from when I'm a child. So I've always been into that stream and I've always been like passionate about it. So I personally, I really enjoyed art classes and it benefited me a lot. And I think school is a very good way to reach out because through school was when I first started entering competitions, when I first went for exhibitions, I wouldn't have gotten that opportunity if I wasn't in any art teams or if I wasn't like the art community in our school. And then I also got this major advantage in my 11th grade where I had to um, get a bunch of people and then design the entire school for the 12th grade graduation for the 12th graders. So that was a really big moment for me because it's not only about like the control I had of like transforming to transforming the school into like a major dream for like the 12th graders. It's going to be like a big event for them. But it was something like, oh, I'm changing someone's life and I'm going to like, you know, make a difference for someone else. So that's another thing that I really enjoyed. And how I balance school and art. Honestly, for me, I've always been into art like throughout my life. Um, in 11th grade, I took business so that I get an idea of how I could combine business and art together. And then when I came to 12th grade, I took art and business as well. And then later on, I realized that when I'm going to university, I want to do something which can be business oriented, but also in a form of art. 
So I chose to do graphic designing. So hopefully this September, I'm going to start with graphic designing and build a career from there. So gradually, I think like my art and school life is just going to combine to become an art school life. So I don't really have any, you know, balance when my school life and art life is going to be the same. Yeah, so that's my story and perspective on art. Thank you. Great, great. And you know, you are very lucky to pursue the career, which is your passion. Thank you, Humera. Yeah. Thanks a Thank lot. Thank you. Now Thank we, you. Uh, we are, I'm becoming very curious as to see the youngsters, how, how passionately they are speaking. So moving to our other young speaker, Shama, Shama Al Jalaf. Uh, hi guys, I'm Shamal Jallaf. Um, I am. I just finished 11th grade. I'm going into my senior year next year. And for me, it's the same as Mira. For me, since I was young, like I started doing art. I don't even remember when it, when the journey started. You know, and my parents point like they always tell me you even like you were interested in it before you even started speaking, which is like you know I don't know, but like yeah, I still don't remember when it started for me. And it's a very special thing in my life. People always ask me like what be uh, like when I tell them artists they always like oh really like not you know like is can that really be an actual job and I'm like yeah it can like you can be an artist and like that's the thing I really want to change this in this world I want artists to be like young artists to be able to really like tell people what they want to become without people questioning it you know like without them being like oh can this actually be like a you know like an actual professional career so that's the thing, uh, that's like one of the goals in life like that I have. And this year I just finished my IG arts and it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever been through. It actually like made me learn more about art and um, thankfully in my school, they, the lessons in art, they actually encourage me and the teachers I have have always been encouraging. And uh, yeah, like they always help me and uh, they always like tell me like what, like they always help me. and. It's very helpful to have like a school that is very, you know, supportive, unlike, you know, people who don't take it seriously. And uh, also like, it's a very interesting, um, it's a very interesting career to take on because art is not just for me personally, it's not just like a hobby. It's way more than that. And I always encourage people to try it out. And yes, you don't have to be very creative and talented. Art is everything. Like it's, it's, a, it's a part of life. I feel like it's not just like, you know, uh, taking paint and paper and just like drawing. It's everything you do. It's there in your, you know, like daily activities. So that's another thing. And, um, about school, uh, what I like, what I'd like for them to do for uh, art is for them to give more art classes in school. Start doing that more, and take the art class outdoors. That is very um, interesting, and it makes the like creativity come out of the student, and it makes it way more interesting and fun, in my opinion. That's the thing I've always wanted, but unfortunately, it never happened, um, and. Um, like, it's just, you know, um, I've always given more importance to art than, it's not a good thing to do, um, it, like, um, in, like, the view of other people. Like, you know, you don't, you're supposed to put studies first, then your hobbies. But as I said, like, art is not just a hobby for me. I've always prioritized it. I've always done art first, then focused on my studies. Um, so yeah, and um, I am planning on studying it in university and being like becoming an artist in the future and taking it like uh, taking it as like a job professionally. So that's the thing. And I'm very excited in university to like be able to study it and, you know, like have deeper like understanding of it and get to know more people. And I'm very honored to be here to be able to talk to you all. It's been an honor to share my thoughts. And uh, yeah, I'm very excited to hear what all of you have to say about this. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Shama. Thank, Thank, Thank you. OK, now our next speaker, Khan Ayan Abdullah. Uh, hello, everybody. Um, yeah, so today I will be sharing my views on art among all of you. But first, I would like to introduce myself. 
my name is Khanayan Abdullah. I have uh, started my 10th in Delhi private school, Sharjah. I have quite a few hobbies. I love playing football as a sport, reading, browsing various theories, paradoxes. Um, then I'm also very interested into space and how the universe works and also want to pursue a career in aerospace engineering. Yeah, so that's most of about me. So now uh, moving forward, what art means to me, uh, like the most common description that I've heard from my friends or anybody I've met is art is a piece of painting, picture or sculpture, something like that. Yeah, it is a sculpture, it is a painting, but to me, it is something way more than that. Art is something that is really deep. How I interpret art is it's the ability that allows you to unfold your wildest imaginations into reality, that allows you to express your deepest passions, thoughts, feelings into reality. And art is present like um, all around us, every single place there is art, like in the clothing we are wearing right now, my, our hairstyle, architecture, or even makeup, everything is art. Yeah, so you just need to have the eye to see the beauty of art around us. Now for me, the purpose of art in my life is very important. For, um, I feel that art plays the most major part in all our lives. Um, I would not be saying that we are giving a life to art. I would rather say that art is giving us all a life. Now, in the most difficult situations or the deepest situations, art is what brings us all together. Like even today, even though there is Corona, there's COVID outside, we are all present here, standing together with each other. We have been all put together due to art to fight it just with a paint and a canvas. And yeah, so, um, now art has, like I said, has innumerable roots. I am pulled towards painting and photography. And that's of course, because of my mom and Daija in my blood. <laughs> uh, and I really admire and like, it's interesting to know that how art can make you feel joyful, even when you're feeling down. And as a student, I um, many times, like I'm fed up of my studies sometimes, and I find art as a way or painting as a way to escape into my imagination and bring it down on the scanner or on the um, sketchbook. Um, now art is in short, is like my greatest hobby. It's, it's a medium which I use to open up uh, my heart and my mind. And I happen to have a very, very wild imagination. And the only possible way I like see is to put it all down on my sketchbook. Yeah, and art, how I connect art to myself is um, through my emotions. How I feel is how my art comes up. I do art every time, like however I feel. And that's how it comes up. Sometimes I may be gloomy. 99% I'm not, I'm the jolly kind of person. But um, sometimes when I'm glo gloomy, my sketches would be of skulls or twisted people, like deadly sketches. That's how I portray art at that moment. Other times they are joyful, um, deep meaning sketches of my ideas or of how the world shall work or how it's working. That's how I portray my sketches in other ways. Then I, like I said, my other hobby is photography. It also plays a huge part in my life. Um, I always feel the need to capture a moment before it passes away, before they become memories. So that's where photography comes in. I connect myself to a moment and find in that something that is not really visible to a naked eye by a common person. Um, like, um, for example, a usual door. I love clicking pictures of old doors. That may be just a door for other people, but for me, it's artistic. I find deep meanings in various random occurrence of nature, like a fine lining in shadow and light. I feel that like when I uh, saw that occurring, the first thing that comes in my head is the various decisions of life. Um, yeah, now talking about art in school lessons, uh, yeah, uh, our school does have art lessons from KG1 to grade eight. Um, for me, it was only till grade five because our school added uh, art lessons for middle wing only two years back. For me, I would honestly say I never paid real attention in my art classes. Um, 
I am very interested into art. I love art as a hobby, but for some reasons, I never felt interested in my school art classes. Um, it was probably because I have felt that our teachers did not really give um, more, like they weren't as interested in teaching as other teachers maybe for their subject. They could have made art classes way more interesting using much more uh, fascinating mediums like uh, the previous talk said, uh, we could do art classes in the open. That would have made a, a beautiful scenario and made a medium to open my mind a bit more and others like me. Like if I compare other students from my class, they really slacked off during art class, I would say. <laughs> it, had, it did not have any effect on them. Yeah, so that's my personal feeling on our art classes. Now, how I balance my art and academic studies. Um, now, this is what I would like to say over here. Uh, a student like me, or even an office going person, everybody has 24 hours in hand. And all of us need to take out time for us, for our relaxation time or to fulfill our own hobbies. So this is how I manage my time. My first priority is go to my eight hours sleep. Uh, that's healthy, okay. Uh, and then, <laughs> uh, and then comes my studies and art side by side. Studies um, three hours a day. I can't do more than that. I just I, I can't do more than that. So okay. after that, I witness uh, and I um, identify those blocks of time left for me where I spend my time idle, mostly doing nothing. Before I used to do nothing in that time, probably watching TV or just lying down doing nothing. So that's the point where I now started utilizing my hobbies, my art to do something useful, to open up myself and um, yeah, uh, spend time for myself with my family. So that's most of it. And um, I would like to state this quote at this point, uh, how I feel time is it's like a water uh, log sponge. If you squeeze it enough, there will always be some time that you can find. Yeah. So that's where I would like to end. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Mr. Mr. Halil is laughing. I will come back to you because, uh, you know, the students are getting witty, interesting and, and very open. They are not hiding any of their feeling, what they are feeling about the art in the school, what they are feeling about what. So we, we will, we are, I'm sure we are going to have a very strong and be ready for to answer their questions. Yeah, they're, they're amazing. What they're saying, what they're doing at the moment is amazing. I'm, I'm really happy to hear what they're saying. So please, yeah, feel, all of you, feel, feel free, like, you know, yes, please, what you would like to talk. Say, yeah. Now coming to Govind Vashisht. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Govind Vashisht. I have just completed my grade 12 from open schooling. I was basically home uh, after my grade 10th. So for me, art was like uh, expressing myself. Like when I was in grade eight, my teacher, specifically the student counselor who was in our uh, school, uh, I had problems expressing myself. I used to get angry a lot. So she told me to go through or look up something that would make me release my stress. So I looked through many things. I, was in, I tried sports, I tried uh, studying like that's pretty good but I tried studying <laughs> so one day one of my students my classmates uh, he recommended like come come have uh, an, uh, an art session with us I went there it was okay for the first time he told me first time of course nothing would be that good so I went there regularly and started getting interesting so I took up art from there for me it was fine from the start. Like it was like, okay, I'm going there. Like, like there'll be paint, paint. I'm going to use it. I'm going to throw it around. Like everything might, something might come up. So the first expression was that. But slowly, as I started going into art, I started realizing, oh, it's actually really fun, and it's actually releasing my stress. And I was getting, I was getting less angry day by day, if I could express it. So, so my art teacher recommended me to look up uh, some different things as well, like uh, what specify yourself as in what kind of art you want to do, like landscape or abstract or 
any kind of portraits or anything so i started looking up art uh, like what kind of uh, paintings or what kind of drawings i could be easier to express myself so from there i looked up uh, abstract art i tried doing landscape i also went into uh, portraits so from there i went into architecture as well because in my grade 10th exam we had to choose a subject like a topic when we have to choose like we have to take a we had to take up a topic to describe ourselves so i took up the architecture like uh, the buildings and everything that found me pretty interesting so my teacher recommended me to uh, take up architecture as a subject because i was basically not that not that good at studying as well and i was basically started getting into painting and as well so she told me to get into architecture and everything so basically that's how i started getting into art i'm not that uh, into art till now i'm still looking into it i am going into the different art fields and trying to uh, still figure out like what am i actually good at so yeah that's it thank you okay um sorry thank you govin thank you and thanks to be so honest <laughs> ridima purohit yeah um hello everyone so i'm ridima and i study at dpa sharja i'm in grade 11 and my hobbies basically consist of dance karate and writing and a little bit of sketching and um i'm a blogger on the side as well for me art means just a form of expression and communicating when you are at a loss of words and i personally i admire all forms of art because each kind portrays the same message but in a unique way because each form of art is just expressing yourself but again it's extremely unique and i think that it's you know one of the most enticing ways of portraying one's views and feelings and it allows people to connect spiritually too which i have experienced in my life and i feel like the purpose of art in my life can be summed up into one word which is i think important and i'm saying this because whenever i want to deal with academic pressure or stress and you know to let it all go away peacefully i you know just for the most part i do it through different forms of art again such as writing or even drawing and you know i'm sometimes i'm able to truly see how beautiful each person is by the uh, by the way you know they just portray their feelings through art again i have been to uh, many exhibitions because of my mom because she's an artist and i genuinely feel blessed because seeing you know so many different kinds of people and their talents and their form of art has inspired me to some point so yeah and as for school art lessons um i i was interested in uh, the um, art lessons taught in school but again i feel like they were you know just limited to basic art lessons and you know not each form of art was covered properly because i mean like even drawing that can be in the form of modern art abstract art and pop art but we were just limited to basic you know drawing someone's face or scenery and stuff and i think that if the school is able to communicate with the students and just share these forms of art each student will be able to understand which form of art they're truly interested in and i personally feel like that can bring a change and um if i'm being honest uh, keeping a balance between art and studies has been hard for me although i'm trying and i just feel like it is something i need to master still and mostly i just finish off my school work and you know just finish off the day and and at night um i'm a night owl <laughs> and at night i sit with my sketchbook or with the nape for size paper and i start to doodle because that's how i just let go of all the stress and i feel good about myself because again i like expressing myself and i just feel like i'm able to do that through art so it plays a very important role in my life although i am not looking at it at it as a career because i am passionate about the environment and feminism but i will um take a career in environmental science so i want to be an environmental scientist but i still feel like art inspires me every day and it is one of the most creative forms of expressing yourself 
So yeah, that's my part. Thank you. Thank you, Redima. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Uh, so Pari is waving. Pari, you want to say something? Because we uh, uh, before uh, we will come back to you, Pari. Okay. After listening to over these five energetic, truthful teenagers, I would like to invite Mrs. Sultana Kazim now to share her views after listening to them. What, what, what do you think? Unmute, unmute. Please unmute. Un unmute yourself first. Yeah, yeah, Pari. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, yes, yes. You can you hear me? Okay. Um, you know, somebody earlier said you should have art everywhere. Yes, we do. Look at your heart. It's written all over your heart. Heart is written all over your heart. So whatever you do, whatever you say, whatever you breathe, whatever you eat and sleep, it's there, the art. And every movement that you do should be artistic. And I'll give you an uh, instant. Uh, my daughter was five years old at that time. The phone rang and she ran to answer it. And of course she said, hello, how are you? So the other voice on the other side was an older lady said, darling, why can't you put some sweetness in your voice like your mother does? <laughs> <laughs> so it's also how you answer a phone or how you put a, a teacup down or how you open a door, how you open a window, how you sit from a standing position. I want the kids to remember this, that you can put art in every moment of your everyday life. That it's not just a piece of canvas and some paint that you splash on. Everything has an art, the music has art, the singing, your voice, every, every, everything. And so without this, this really defines you as the kind of uh, person you are, the quality of the person you are, the class of person you are. Class is a very English word, I'm sorry to use it. But uh, it shows how educated you are, how refined you are. And so I want to stress that, that please, everything you do, watch yourself, what you're doing. Hear yourself, how you sound. It's a great idea to record your voice every now and then and play it back for yourself and see now that sounded terrible why can't i do something better than that so it's nice to be your own critic don't wait for uh, the professional critic like peter grassman <laughs> to come and tell you no this is not good <laughs> peter sorry <laughs> so uh, this is what i want you to do is you don't need to go to a glamour school or uh, they call a charm school. Um, you can do it yourself, criticize yourself, your action, your voice, your sound, your movement, your uh, attitude. This is so important, your attitude in life and everybody will define you according to how you present yourself to the world. So that's all I can tell you, that there is art in everything. And uh, of course, the wonderful way of expressing yourself. Look at those uh, olden, I mean, ancient days. Uh, they drew on the walls, didn't they? So they were trying to tell you a story, but instead of really speaking it, they were drawing it. You could, they show you that they were hunting. They showed you that the, the ruler was sitting and the queen was there watching and the, the uh, dancers were dancing and things like that. And um, this is one way of expressing of uh, learning something from each other. And then there was the teacher who would sit on the chair and the children would be sitting on the floor listening and learning. And so uh, drawing has been there from the time human being learned how to make a straight line. And uh, I, I always say, you know, Alif, what is Alif? Alif is just a straight line. This is where you begin, <laughs> Alif. Alif, yeah. So, um, Drawing, I, I love drawing. I, um, I have such a passion for painting and art. Uh, I had to decide between art and music. And I loved both of them so much. And um, I went to my father and I said, what shall I do? I can't take both because they won't allow me. My classes were all science and, art, uh, and math. 
they were all so many of them. And then I had one class left and they said, you have to decide between art and music. So of course I love art. So my dad said, look, you're good in art. You're naturally good in art. You've always been good in art. Take art because in that way, your overall mark will be high. But if you take music, there could be somebody who's better than you in music and that will bring down your position in class. So you may not be first all the time. So I said, oh, forget it. I'm definitely taking art. So this is what happened. But I've always regretted not pursuing music after that. Um, so I, I would uh, really want each and every kid that is there to embrace the fact that art is part and parcel of living. As long as your heart is beating, you have art there. And uh, not to forget it ever forget it. Once you forget it, then you are not cultured enough to live. So I want you to always learn how to understand that it is very important to, to have this very fine uh, mannerism in you that will, uh, will be considered as being well brought up by your parents. They, because it also it reflects on your parents. Because every time somebody does something crazy or, or says a bad word, we say, oh, didn't your mother teach you how to not to use this word? Yeah, am I right? And the same way, the, your action is very important. So um, I think the young people here are doing a great job and I'm very proud of them. And thank you for teachers like, like uh, <laughs> Eva and uh, Farah uh, who are doing such a marvelous job in helping them. Thank you. Thank, thank you very thank much. You, thank you. Uh, we will go go to Dr. Nafisa, but before that, uh, to Pari, because Pari is waving her hand and she wants to say something. Yes, Pari. No, it was uh, like you know when I uh, when I entered this meeting that time I waved <laughs> my hand. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Okay, then we can go to Dr. Nafisa. Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Um, it, I mean. Come back to you, Parit. Yes, Yeah, Nafisa. It's really amazing how the you know uh, the young youngsters at this age they are so focused and they are so sure of what they want and you know they've already uh, decided and you know where they want to pursue. Of course, they might require a bit of channelizing and support, you know, or what exactly. But it's really important at this point of time because, uh, like you know. Mr. Uh, Abdul Wahid and Homera said that you know your passion is important, uh, not only to enjoy art but to explore their own creativity. So it's it's very uh, important that they have realized it at this at this age, and you know they uh, they know that they need to pursue it in that direction. And like probably a few years back, uh, you know having art like uh, like uh, Radhima said that you know probably. Uh, and I am also that, you know, probably art would not have been taken so seriously when it is compared to academics. But now we see, do see a shift in that view because, uh, you know, many curriculums have now art integrated curriculums, uh, boards like CBSC. Uh, you would have that, you know, art is an integral part. So they would art, uh, not only visual arts, but performing arts like, you know, theater, poetry, all they are included. It has evolved and it might take a while, but it is there. So it has set in and uh, this we have realized that, you know, art being an important part, especially in a pandemic, like, um, like most, like 90% of my family has become artists, you know, in their own form. They have been writing, they have been doing it on YouTube, really. I mean, my aunt uh, who never had anything to do with art, she is painting, you know, my uh, niece and nephews, they have been writing stories. So I think like uh, Sultana Mam said that, you know, it's part of us and uh, it's how we tap it, how we, you know, uh, make it a part of it because it definitely brings out the best in us because it makes us a more cultured, a more refined person. And uh, we see that, like I said, that in the curriculum, uh, so we see also a shift in STEM like it was a hands-on program for students to use uh, practicality in science, technology, engineering, and, you know, uh, math. But now we see it's STEAM rather than STEM. So art is, again, included. So we do see, uh, you know, it is there. 
it will take a while, but it also requires a little support from the parents as well as the mentors. Like Ayan said that, you know, uh, art is at, at the primary level and it's basically, uh, you know, very basic. And I mean, most of uh, our students, like even me, when I was a student, we felt that. But I guess that is also because of, uh, you know, the limitations of what they have to teach. Uh, you know, uh, in, in that spe uh, specified 30 minutes or 40 minutes. But uh, we can take it to a different level, thanks to technology, YouTube. We can, you know, explore uh, creativity. We can uh, study ourselves, you know, like Sultana Mam said that, you know, record uh, what we are saying and, you know, so we can be a self-critic as well. So when we do it, you know, we flip on. That's why, you know, most of the artists keep the sketchbooks and journals. When they flip, so they kind of uh, reflect on what they have and what they, you know, they can do better. And so this is one of the ways uh, why, uh, you know, they can uh, explore and learn. And uh, art alone, of course, is amazing. But, you know, with different other sub uh, subjects, it definitely becomes spectacular. So uh, I think uh, we should always be, uh, you know, focused and we should know uh, what we are doing. If, if we think we are inclined uh, most importantly, it's the parent support that matters, you know, because uh, we need to understand that it is a part of it. And, uh, you know, like Shiva and Farah have been, uh, you know, given platform to kids, uh, you know, in the in uh, their uh, previous exhibition that, that was for kids. And a uh, lot of other opportunities have been provided. I think last year there was a solo uh, exhibition, uh, like uh, exhibit uh, 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 kids. And uh, he had sold, uh, you know, a lot of paintings on the spot. But of course, and with parents always being constantly being with him and, you know, promoting him. So I guess it is also apart from the passion, apart from students being focused and passionate about it, we need to support them through uh, different platforms that are there. And we have a lot now, uh, you know, thankfully, not only provided by, you know, um, uh, the school, but also by different entities, you know, like Dubai Culture is there, for instance, and other, uh, like you are there, private organizations, like you have uh, YouTube videos, they have access, uh, accessibility to that. So these are the way that they can explore, and we should always have a word of encouragement, you know, like they say, that, you know, if you encourage, and like Mr. Wahid also, uh, Abdul Wahid said that in the beginning, that, you know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you are 100% creative, but even if and you're passionate about it, you should encourage because you never know that, you know, they might, you know, bloom into something even more better, right? Because uh, we do have examples of young artists as old as, you know, like 11 months who have uh, had their uh, solo exhibition and have been recorded as the youngest professional artist. I mean, 11 months is nothing. I mean, they, they are hardly, you know, uh, uh, striving to walk and uh, you would have that. And, uh, this girl, Arushi Bhatnaga, she is uh, recorded in the Guinness World of Book Records as the youngest professional artist. So we do see, so we don't find it like, you know, age is a limiting factor, but definitely a little motivation, a little push to the artists, to the youngsters, and to make sure that, you know, we don't uh, undermine that, you know, no, first you take academics and then art. But, you know, like uh, many of uh, the youngsters, they have uh, tried to make a balance and encourage them. I think that's how they will progress and how they will zoom. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Nafisa. Yes, now, uh, Ms. Manisha, Manisha Bhardwaj. Hi, everyone. Uh, am I audible? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so I'm Manisha Bhardwaj. And uh, I... Look at your background, backdrop. With beautiful work, beautiful oh. work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. So the, the first introductory line for me will be that I got introduced to myself um, five or six years back. Before than that, I don't know what I was doing. I guess I was living in shadows. Not even my neighbor knew by, uh, me by my name. And uh, I had a bit of anxiety issues also. But then art happened and everything changed and now I actually feel like I'm living a fairy tale. 
every moment is beautiful every moment is happy and uh, like one of the speakers said i was hearing that it is so true that uh, nowadays life is like so materialistic everything is so rigid and the society has trained our brain you know in such a way that we try to find logic in everything we try to analyze everything we try to dissect it into different different pieces and then try to understand but uh, that doesn't take society anywhere because we stay engaged in pulling down each and other and you know analyzing each and other and, and that doesn't work that's why artist is the live wire the light artist is the soul and heart of society because they think through heart they do not think through brain so there is no logic whatever they feel whatever they want whatever they want to express the kind of positivity they want to spread they do it through art and uh, that makes society so beautiful like for an example uh, we all can see that this is a covid era and everyone is so frustrated and uh, each and every field has taken a bad hit because of that and um, artist even they and i think they were the worst hit community reason being uh, paintings as we all know they are always taken as a luxury item if we talk about business business and uh, as of now people are more conscious about their saving they are taking care of the list and painting falls or the artist art channel anything falls last in the list but if you go and google it out the only part of the society which was so alive bubbling with energy and you know spreading happiness and positivity everywhere it was as it was artists so there was i could see the contest thriving i could see artists painting the walls and painting the uh, lanes and galleries of hospital you know wearing the mask those tight masks and painting it away and uh, there were so many fellow artists i saw they started with the free workshops because see that's that's the soul of an artist artists will never ever think just about themselves they think about the society and wherever they go they carry the society with themselves so it's like the spreading the positivity everywhere so this is what i want to say and um, art is alive everywhere and uh, basically this time the covid time this is the best time for the artist why because if you look in the past and if you talk about the time where when we were facing the plague when we were facing different issues look at the artwork there so we sitting here can actually imagine what went there because of the artist uh, the, the photography the write ups the poetry that happened during that phase the art the painting that was created during that phase so now we are here and we can create history and this time let's not paint it in a um connection connection failed oh okay no she inspired technology yeah 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 it's a, so uh, so maybe we uh, we will take her again uh, we will go to sugat hello yes i'm sugat here hi sugat am i audible yes yes you are yeah so i would say one thing only that art don't take art as a hobby i i i I'll admire some of the ridima including so many students one thing only art is not a hobby yeah art should be way of life everywhere art should be there in study in your real life in your every step of life the main part of art i would say i i am known i i i want to help parents student art will relieve your stress and improve your academics and the thing some students are not good in art but i would say that we are for you art doesn't require skill and artistic touch but art requires just way of expressing yourself okay do do the art if you are in under stress you do do some some sketches do the art live sketches it will heal your mind it will improve your uh, hand writing skill it will improve your memory power that that kind of power art has all right so art i would say that 
art is almost everything okay you are you are very very you know studious student okay but sometime you are under stress so what you will do you just take a pencil and doodle something and i would say that you inculcate art with music okay i have so many music therapists friend they give me some tunes like you know uh you play music while you study while you do art some instrumental tunes okay it will helpful to your mind it will release your stress very well and art low achiever average achiever and high achiever all kind of achiever it will helpful to everyone it will helpful to parents also and i firmly believe it will improve your self esteem self confidence if you are if you are doing live sketching you will see the people you will try to understand their mind that body language that aspect that process will helpful to helpful to you to understand the people so art is i would say uh, helpful to, mainly i would say art is for academics i do art to improve students academics so what they are not good but they will improve in academics through art for example if you are learning calligraphy what calligraphy will do it will improve your concentration level because you have to hold your pen properly so you have to connect your mind to your hand and your tool so that will also improve your concentration so concentration way of life and overall memory power also it will improve your memory power so art is just magic thank you subhat thank you so the things are becoming more and more interesting with our students with our panelists so manisha is back we want her to complete her uh, things manisha please sorry about that i logged out uh just that that i was trying to say that we as an artist can bring positivity and can stamp positivity and happiness in this era because we are the live wire we are the soul and heart and uh, i was uh, i was overhearing few of our students the panelists they were saying that uh, people around them they keep on saying that uh, art cannot be a career art can be a fantastic career and uh, i am i'm here to say that and uh, reason being that like i said when i started my introduction i was a nobody and then i got got introduced to art and as of now i have bagged almost 10 awards and in those awards there are two international and one national awards and i am ceo and founders of nisha arts and i am not only just selling my paintings not only selling my artworks but i am conducting various workshops online offline and this is the boon you know this is a blessing to be getting involved in such a career with career which is your passion as well which gives you happiness which gives you satisfaction and of course living in this society we need money as well if not for other worldly things we need money to support our art supplies our art things our dream so i'm a self dependent woman now so brace yourself and go ahead with this career this career is very fruitful not just money it gives you immense happiness thank you everyone and that is the most important part because when you are uh, whatever you are doing you should be happy that is the most yes. important thank you very much yes you know always say that empty jug cannot pour water into everyone's glasses so first love yourself be happy let your jug be full and yes. then pour happiness spread happiness thank, thank you. you thank you now moving to our young speakers because uh, now this is going I, i i feel after these speakers and our this then this is going to be a very good debate instead of discussion <laughs> so be ready for all all those things uh, so now i will like to invite Pal palak surekha hi everyone i'm palak i i study at deepesh gurra i'm a 12th grader and i study business with math so art to me is something that words can't express it is something that can be interpreted in a million ways it brings all people from different cultures together and i had been introduced to art at a very early age from my mother so uh anything like dancing writing and whenever 
I will I'll be very honest uh, whenever I try to sideline myself from art like you know I'll be I, like I, this is my board here so when I whenever I'm very determined that I'll only focus on my academics something inside me really feels incomplete and I just end up bouncing back uh, I have a diploma in classical dance so it I just go back to it I, it just it is just automatic so how art for how it helps me it helps me to relax as well as focus so whenever i'm feeling very frustrated like uh, whenever i do accountancy each chapter has like around 900 questions and that's very frustrating so i uh, i won't do like something technical i would doodle something here and there and uh, of course it just ha- and whenever i want to focus i'll do something very technical i'll try to complete a very integrate piece um for as has my school helped me in art my school is very very focused on academics so it would it it would only focus on students who formally study art i am a business student uh, so for uh, them you know we like completely sidelined so but that that doesn't really bother me because it feels good to be recognized for what you do but it isn't everything i'm doing art for myself right so i'm uh, i would really like to thank minisha ma'am here because she really inspired me uh, you know i went to one of her workshops and uh, you know she just plays a beautiful uh, playlist and you know we crack jokes and we just uh i don't know it, it, and time just passes by so and how do i balance between my studies and art i don't find myself really confident to comp- to comment on that i would and i would love to hear um uh everybody else's view on that so thank you thank you palak very very smartly spoken everything you said also and you uh, you you were very clear what you want to say and what you don't so now moving to our uh, other young speaker varsha saju nayar hi so i hope i'm audible yes yes varsha you are um a very good evening to all so before i begin i would like to thank kalil sir and sultana ma'am for generously giving us your valuable time and it's really inspiring to see the support extended by you to all of us you're so, welcome thank you ma'am so i am varsha nair and i am 11th grade student pursuing my education with delhi private school sharja and i'm currently studying science and psychology so now moving to art so what does art mean to me um art is more than a subject so on this i completely agree with uh, sugat sir art is a way of life and ever since i was little expressing was something that i wasn't very good at and even if i did express anything it was only to my parents so this often led to a situation with a lot of sealed emotions and it kept getting stronger by the day and i soon found out that the one way i could freely let myself express whatever i wanted to was through art so art is an escape for me it's not just paint on canvas it's much deeper than that it's very therapeutic and it it's, it's healing so my parents would know this very well <laughs> when i sit to paint i get everything set and i blast music on my speaker and i usually prefer something that's soothing as compared to heavy metal while painting and that's it i'm officially in another world i sit for hours on end painting and singing and i don't even notice the time fly by so you see this is the effect that painting has on me and whatever is said and done art will always always be a part of me so now i'm going to speak a little about what i find very interesting about art like many people said art is a form of expression and one of the things that i find most pleasing and beautiful in art is perspective now if i create an artwork and i ask someone else to interpret it it can be seen that our personal interpretations of what we see 
vary from person to person. And this is really amazing because it's human nature to personalize an object. So often when people look at a painting, they search for some kind of connection, something that ties them to the work that they see. And by doing this, their interpretation comes off as a reflection of what they yearn for or the memory of any past experience that was triggered by this artwork or even who they are. So you can understand a lot about a person by considering their view on art. And that's why art is considered as a medium of variable perception. And this is what art means to me. It's a form through which I can be what I want to be. I can express what I wish to express. And most importantly, there is no wrong in art. There's only different views. So now coming to school and art, as many people said, <laughs> Since I am a student, school plays a very important role in my life. And my school has been very supportive when it comes to this. But if we are going to look into reality, um, I'd say that statistically speaking, most schools don't have many opportunities when it comes to art. And personally, I do feel like that should change. If you look at a majority of schools, you will notice that most of them pay a lot of attention to sports and not much attention to cultural activities. And I disagree with this concept because cultural activities such as art or drama, theater, anything, plays an equal and important role as sports do. And thankfully, my school has taken the initiative to beat this difference. I'm sure we haven't quite got there yet, but I'm sure the school is working towards it. And it's really nice to see how more and more schools are now adopting art as a subject and trying to minimize this difference. And Generally speaking, art is a subject which would enhance a child's creativity and it even develops your problem solving skills since you learn about viewing the same object or problem in multiple perspectives. So there's a lot of factors in the education of art that can influence your personal choices in life. So being a student also provides another challenge and that is balancing academics and art. And I am very happy to say that I have been doing this quite well. And although it is hard, it is not impossible. You just really manage your time well and make sure that you make the most of the time that you have allocated for yourself. And like Ayan said, sleep is a priority. If I don't get my sleep, I'll be very, very cranky the whole day. So sleep and food is very, very important. <laughs> so to summarize everything, art is something that brings someone's great joy. And it's through these platforms that we get to share that joy with others. And all the initiatives taken by Fanun Arts on that front is spectacular. I am very grateful to Shiba Ma'am and Farah Ma'am for giving me opportunities as grand as this one. And I am indebted to all of you for your constant support and your kind words of encouragement. And I'm looking forward to learning more on this fine day. So thank you all for patiently listening to me and have a nice day ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Varsha. So nice to hear everything from you. Uh, moving to next, Yashna Gupta. Uh, hi, everyone. My name is Yashna. Uh, thank you so much for having me here. And thank you to Minisha Ma'am for extending this opportunity to me. So I come from a family of doctors and creativity isn't really a priority in our family. And I didn't even get into art until I was in ninth grade when I just randomly copied a cartoon of the internet and my mom appreciated me on that and that's how my art journey began. Art to me is so much more than just a hobby. It's not only expression, it's a form of relief. It's something so private that I do it for myself and not to show somebody else or make somebody else happy. And truly what the most fascinating thing to me about art is that we as artists can recreate something from our mind onto paper. We can give it life. And art itself has opened a gateway to a very creative world for me. So many opinions, so many perspectives, so many different ideas that I get to see daily. And it really amazes me how much of a diverse community it is. Art is not only just a portrait or a landscape. There's so much more to it and it totally it totally amazes me how a lot of us are specializing in one thing. So that's definitely, art has definitely changed me as a person. It has made me so much more dedicated, so much more patient. 
uh honestly its purpose is whatever i decide to give it at one point it used to give me confidence at one point it makes me happy and at some point yeah it might even help me get money so it's definitely what i choose to give it and besides an artist i'm a storyteller as well and that's how i really connect to it i create characters in my head and i give them life through drawing and vice versa i create a character and then i give them a story behind that that's how i connect uh as for school i have to be very honest uh, i only took one art class in grade 11 and then i didn't take it because it honestly diminished my interest because i feel like when i studied it in school it totally derailed what i actually loved about art the freedom to create anything the freedom to do what you want and being given a set of rules and timelines it just didn't really do it for me so that was something that definitely uh, bugged me and i feel like it could really be improved if each student can be given some independence and some freedom everybody has a unique face everybody has a unique thinking and one syllabus cannot uh, encompass all of that that's why i feel like students should be given some freedom and a lot of our teachers especially in boards like cbsc they're very syllabus minded that or let like we'll teach uh, this which is supposed to come in the syllabus the composition the still life and that is it so i feel like this is something that definitely needs to change and because of this what only i decided not to go to an art school instead i'm going to be pursuing interactive digital arts which is a combination of journalism art and technology uh, how i balance art and school is pretty complicated but i decided that um, there's no really a balance based on hours i don't balance it on hours it's mostly that if i know okay i'm giving 6 hours to art and 3 hours to study it's not that i'm more devo- devoted to art it's just that i'm judging it on the basis of my creativity the time it takes on each subject and each art piece and according to my intellect so and if sub- and uh, yeah of course basic time management comes into play if i know i'm more creative at night i make sure i finish my homework and academics in the morning and then i think uh, focus on art in the evening so yeah that's it from my side and again thank you so much for having me here it's very interesting to hear everybody's opinion thank you thank you thank you yashna now uh, rayan zidan hello can you guys hear me yes yes i right. um so hi guys uh, i'm rayan zidan and i graduated from the international school of creative science back in 2019 and now i study in ajman university so art has always been there for me ever since i was young as a child i would always love to be alone and busy myself with building things and drawing things and i would even design and create things like i'd get an idea of some new invention like a flying hoverboard or something and i'd want to create it you know cartoons and shows always used to inspire me with these ideas so during school art class was always something i'd look forward to it was really fun for me to express myself and put inspiration and put my inspiration and ideas on paper with the help of teachers and all that it would also help me notice and appreciate the art and design in all the things around me like the architecture of buildings or the artistic functionality in furniture so in school i joined many of the art competitions and exhibitions but i would always prioritize my academics however i would never ignore the importance of art in my life If we look at like ancient artifacts from history we can see that forms of art has been around since thousands of years ago so obviously it has an impact on people whether it comes to aesthetic purposes or practicality i currently study biomedical engineering and i plan to integrate artistic per, uh, artistic principles into my design like for example when creating a prosthetic arm i would design the arm as an artist and also as an engineer so i wish to mix the artistic world with the scientific world uh, with all that being said i believe that art is a huge factor in advancing society and technology just as much as science and engineering an even balance between these disciplines is the best way to advance as humans in this world so that's uh, my take thank you guys for listening to me thank, thank you, you. rayan uh, you end up with a very important point that science and technology and art that connection we will talk after the panelist regarding that thing so now uh, thank you all the students now i will come to our panelist yasser shams khan uh, 
Hi guys. Um, I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So I'm doing my PhD from Oxford in literature, and uh, it was lovely hearing everyone speak about what they feel and how they relate to art. And um, what I have learned throughout these years is basically art can be defined in so many different different ways. I'm going to take a few of the definitions which I like uh, to give my perspective on what I think. Um, I mean, there are the boring definitions of art, which are like art is there to teach and to delight, uh, which was given by Horace and was followed up by many, many years after that. I find that extremely boring, very instrumental sort of definition. The definition I like is one given by Oscar Wilde, which is art is useless. Uh, I just want you to sort of take a moment to understand what that statement actually means. Art is useless. In, in a world which is so functional and instrumental, where everything needs to have a price tag, everything needs to have a purpose, everything needs to be, you need to be doing something in order to get a result. We have something so beautiful, so unique, which actually has no practical value which has actually no practical purpose. And which is not to say it's not significant. It doesn't need to have a practical purpose. You see a beautiful flower. It, flower is not gonna do anything. It, it's not gonna give you anything. It's not gonna give you any uh, instrumental value. And that I think is something which really needs to be cherished about art. The fact that it's completely useless. And that is its prime value. Uh, but having said that, art does allow you to do a lot of other stuff, which is um, it gives you different perspectives. And I think that is something which is uh, absolutely crucial in today's world, because what that means is it's making you break out of your conformity. What I mean by conformity is things that you've been told, things that you've learned, uh, things that your elders have told you, your parents have told you, your teachers have told you, things which authority figures have told you, governments have told you, states have told you, your books have told you. That is what you need to, at all times, sometimes respectfully, sometimes with rebellion, confront, question, and put to yourself, why do you agree to it? Is it because someone in power has told you that? Uh, why? Is that reason sufficient? Is that reason alone? So what art should do for you, if anything, it should make you inquisitive enough to question your own perspectives, to question what you think and to question your most deeply held beliefs. It needs to offer you that window because that's where you have complete freedom and that's where the true freedom of art is where you are not confined by the ways the world wants you to think. You're not confined by systems which impose their ways of thinking upon you. You can, and that's where true creativity is, you can create your own ways of seeing. And if you understand this basic thing, it's amazing because you realize that reality itself, whatever we call reality, whatever we understand by reality, reality is is something so flippant, something so ephemeral. It changes with your change in perspective. I'll give you one concrete example, and this is how creativity is essentially a part of science as well. Newton saw the world in a particular way. Now, what Newton did was he transformed the way we actually saw reality. He, before Newton, the world was governed by an arbitrary god, god in terms of, you know, anything you know, it's God's whim. Anything and everything can be done according to God's will. After Newton, even God's laws were then defined by nature, natural laws, what we call physical laws. So even God had to govern in this world according to laws. And those are physical laws, forces, laws of force, and gravity, all that stuff. Newton, in other words, Newton changed the way we looked at reality. He created notions of absolute time and absolute space. Now, we think that that's definite, you know, that's science, it's empirical, it's concrete. Then comes Einstein. 
completely changed the way we look at things. Creativity at its most beautiful essence. What did Einstein say? Wait, there is no absolute time in absolute space. It's all relative. That completely changes our laws, our physical laws, the way we look at reality. That is creativity and art at its most precise. Now, breaking from conformity, and one of the speakers said, you know, uh, we define our own purposes and our own meanings. And I think that's the second definition of art, which I really admire, which is art is creating order out of chaos. It is a search for meaning. We are all lost in ourselves. If you think about it, you know, we, we, we try and live life as if we figured it all out, but we are actually going through life in a state of unfreedom. We might think we are choosing things that we like, but ultimately, what are you doing? You went to school, you go from first grade to second grade to third grade to 12th grade. What freedom do you actually have uh, in the choices that you have? You're, they're very limited. And ultimately, you, you realize that you are actually very lost. Uh, all these uh, protocols that have been created, all these various mechanisms and routes that you've been given. And what we are ultimately doing is trying to search for meaning. And one of the disciplines which allows you the freedom to actually do that without any constraints whatsoever is actually art. To see something again as if it were for the first time. That is what the innocence of a child is. When he's looking at the world for the first time, everything excites him, everything makes him enthusiastic. The, the, the smile of a child is because he's seeing something for the first time. Now think about yourself. When you see something, are you seeing something for the hundredth time? It dulls your feeling. It dulls your access to it, your, your relationship to it. But for once, try and look at it again as if you were looking at it for the first time. That's what art should inspire. That is what art should allow you to access. A deeper, deeper level of meaning, which when everyone else sees it, they see something. But when you access it through that deeper level of meaning, you are seeing something completely different. That is where the third meaning of art, which I really admire, is that art is a lie. It's a lie through which you can access the truth. It is, the truth in itself is inaccessible. No one, knows or no one knows what the truth is. No one can access the truth in its immediate nakedness because the truth is too powerful, too ephemeral, too beyond the confines of what we make the truth to be. And the only way you can access the truth is through mediums. That's why dreams are so important because dreams allow you to access repressed memories, but only in ways which are creative. The mind works through lies, through fiction. So art, in, that's why art, in fact, it comes from the word artifice, artificial. It's a constructed notion, but through that constructedness, we are accessing something which is so pure, so true, so infinite. Uh, like I, my, a few of my favorite verses are from a poem by Blake, which is, just look at the beauty of what he's trying to capture in this. To see a world in a grain of sand and a heaven in a wild flower. To hold infinity in the palm of your hand and eternity in an hour. The truth that art allows you to access, it's not empirical truth. It's not scientific truth. Even though scientific empirical truth might be creative and might be very beautiful in itself. The fact that an entire complicated world can be confined to E equals to MC squared. But the truth that art allows you to access is it's, it's beyond that scientific physical level of truth. It's a deeper, deeper level. It's, it's, it's a truth in which you're accessing the ever transforming dance of the universe in a moment. That's what you're actually doing. And this is what cognitive scientists, in fact, have called the flow state. Think of it. You're stuck in a problem. You can't, you can't get over the problem. There's a writer's block or whatever block that you are, you're having. You can't, you can't get over it. You go to sleep for a moment. Uh, uh, you go to sleep overnight. When you wake up, your mind is fresh. What's happened over, overnight? This is what scientists call a flow state, whereby your mind relaxes and 
the neurons are making connections across your, uh, your, your, your brain. It's accessing information from different parts of your brain and connecting it together. Elements which were never connected together. And when you connect it, that is what the creative process ultimately is. You are making connections which no one else had made before. And that's why art is not a discipline. It's not related to any one particular area of study. And you can see, you know, the, some of the greatest artists have been architects, Zaha Hadid, La Corbusier, Frank Gehry. Uh, they've been scientists. Uh, Bertrand, they've been mathematicians. Bertrand Russell is a mathematician who won the Nobel Prize in literature. Uh, Benuit Men, uh, Mendelbrot is another mathematician who, in fact, gave the mathematics of fractals. Steve Jobs, he was an artist before he was the CEO of Apple. So you can see how Da Vinci, you can't define him. Da Vinci is uh, he's an architect. He is a scientist. He is a, he's an anatomist. He is also a painter. He's an inventor. So artists usually cannot be defined into any one category. And so it's a fault if anyone is trying to do that. Uh, the last thing that I would say in relation to education and school, which comes to the third definition of art, if anything, is that art should never has never been about answers. Every other discipline that you go into, math, science primarily, are about discovering the right answers. That's a very limited approach because the right answer, as I showed you with the Newton and Einstein example, can change depending on how you change your reality and how you change your perspectives. If you change your variables, your answers will change. So to hold on to answers and to be, uh, to be invested in answers too much is, will limit your creativity. What you need to be open to are questions. And art is one area where you can begin with questions and you can end with even more questions. And that is what art is supposed to do. It's supposed to make you ask question, questions, make you question everything. And the person who is viewing it, reading it, seeing it, it is the question that needs to strike their mind because it is the, the most powerful questions which, hold, uh, which carry on, which are never limited, which will survive. And I'm talking about large questions, like what is the meaning of life? Can you actually give an empirical answer to that? What is the meaning of why we are here? What is the meaning of this and that? What is the purpose? Those are the large questions which don't have any fixed answer at all. And it is art which engages in those most difficult of questions. Uh, and hence what I feel schools should be focusing on is telling students to ask the right sort of questions rather than be over invested in answers. You teachers do not have the right to tell students the answer because what they think is the answer is only one perspective. It is the student who has the right to determine what the right question is and to find out their own answers. The teacher can only tell the means of discovering the answers, can only guide the way of trying to come to terms with the answers, but they themselves, to be, uh, to be truly honest, they themselves don't really know the answers. And this is after having lived in this world for 30 years and have been, been given answer upon answers, which all have been dis, uh, unsatisfactory. And uh, hence, I realized the best thing is to stick with the questions and to keep discovering momentary answers to, um, to base your decisions on and to move on and to discover the beauty of the question. And that's what I feel art ultimately is. It leaves the beauty of the question open. Should end there. Thank you, Yasser. Thanks a lot. Very informative. And the most beautiful line was what you said, see the world in the grain of sand. And we will discuss it because it's really, it was beautiful. Thank you. Now, uh, I, 